What's up everyone, Daniel here and Kali Linux just announced their 2019.4 release and it is awesome. They did some really cool stuff and I'm really excited to look at it with you guys. So let's get right into it. Before we get started, the link to download the ISO for Kali is in the description. There's also a couple of links to some books and stuff on Amazon. Those are affiliate links. If you check them out, I might make a couple of bucks and I would really appreciate that. And let me know what your first thoughts of 2019.4, this huge update was, down in the comments. I would love to hear what you think because I'm super excited, but I want to hear what everyone else thinks too. So let's get rolling. The first thing that I notice about this is that they have completely revamped the interface. So now we've got XFCE4 instead of running GNOME by default, which I thought was a stellar decision. I always downloaded the XFCE version anyway. You can see here I've got top running and I only gave this VM two gigs and two cores and it runs so smooth. It is so much better with this XFCE than it was with GNOME. GNOME was just too much for what this operating system does. And we didn't have to sacrifice at all when it comes to how it looks because this theme looks absolutely gorgeous. I love the icons, I love the colors, it's super smooth and minimal and I just cannot emphasize enough how fast this actually runs, even with limited resources like I gave this VM. The first new feature that I want to take a look at that they really hyped up on Twitter and made everyone really excited about is this Kali Undercover. And so if I type Kali Undercover in the terminal what it should do and it does and it looks great it swaps us over to a gtk theme that looks just like windows 10 and it does look just like windows 10. this is incredible if you're sitting in a coffee shop or whatever this is going to fool 95 percent of people and it's so quick to switch i can switch right back with doing the command again and we're right back to our default interface. One of the other things that I thought was really neat about this versus the older versions, and I didn't mess around with the last version, 2019.3, very much, but, and obviously you guys didn't get to see this, but when I installed this on VMware and booted it up for the first time, I had full resolution support, and I even had shared clipboard with the guest operating system by default. I don't know if it just has the VMware tools installed by default or if it detected that I was installing in VMware, but I was really impressed that it was already installed because that's always been a pain point for me is trying to get that stuff working and it just worked out of the box this time. And the next thing I want to talk about is that out of the box they're also supporting BTRFS, which is so bad ass btrfs is awesome it allows you to take snapshots of your file system so if you're running on bare metal and not in a vm like i usually do you can do the same thing where you take a snapshot of the vm before you make changes to it and you can roll back to it if something breaks you can do the same thing with the file system btrfs and the cali team has it in the installer and a guide here on how to use BTRFS on their website. And they also built it into apt. So when you do apt upgrades, that automatically creates a BTRFS snapshot in case something breaks, you can roll back. The Kali team has also made some changes that I can't really show you here because they're not demonstrable, but they've made it so that packaging is now public. So if you want to get involved with the Kali Linux project, it's never been easier because you can now work with and deal with the packages and make contributions that the operating system needs which I think is just incredible. Additionally, they've open sourced all the documentation, so if you wanna make contributions by adding to the documentation, they've got a link for it on the Kali website, and I think that's great too. I've always felt like the Kali documentation was weak at best, but now we should see an influx of people contributing and really, really get awesome documentation for the Kali distribution. And just a couple more things. We got a kernel update, so we're up to 5.3 on the kernel, which is great. It adds a lot of hardware support. This was a big update for the kernel as well. It's nice that they included in this. And then they also have PowerShell, which is super badass. Microsoft open sourced it, and now it's included in Kali, so we can run PowerShell scripts 
directly on our Kali machine and troubleshoot them and work on them when we're working in a Windows environment on our Kali box. Overall, this update was fantastic. And not only was the update itself good, but it also shows that the Kali team in good faith is making decisions that are more geared towards what the community wants and not just doing whatever the hell they want. Because that's how I felt about the GNOME desktop environment. I always felt like who the hell wants to use GNOME on what's supposed to be a mostly lightweight system. And now that they've switched to XFCE, I am absolutely blown away. I think it looks great. It feels great. It's fast. The documentation changes are great and the public packaging just makes it like an all around fantastic update. Kudos to the Kali team and let me know what you think of the new Kali release. I'm really, really interested in hearing what you have to say. If you thought this was interesting, hit that subscribe button, hit like, thank you. Until next time, peace.